Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the sky replacement. And in this video, I want to share with you five of my favorite tips on making sure that you're getting the best possible result with the sky AI tool. Yes, I'm going to share with you five secret professional tips when it comes to matching a new sky with the original image. So if you're interested, get ready, we starting now. Okay, so as you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo. We are in the editing module, where in the landscape section of the main toolbar, we already have the Sky AI tool open. This is the main tool we're gonna be using today, obviously focusing on the sky replacement. Now we're going to be using number of sample files and skies and everything I'm going to be using in this video, you can download simply by going into the description of this video, following the link there and downloading it. Now, when you're ready, import the images into the application, bring the first image into edit module and start with me. So the first tip, an important part of sky replacement is to make sure that you're replacing the sky that is from the same time of the day. Example here. So for example, this is a daylight capture, pure day, sun is strong coming from this side and this direction, pure blue sky. So all we can replace it with is another blue sky, but in this case with nice white clouds. Same thing, if you would have an image with a golden hour time, you would want to replace it with golden hour sky. And also golden hour sky from similar time of the golden hour period. And that goes on for blue hour capture, where you want to use the blue hour skies, and also night skies, night capture, and so on. So looking at this example, let's have a look at it just to confirm my theory. For example, we can jump into the sky selection, go into something like golden hour skies. Now let's make sure that you can see everything. And here, let's just select one of the skies here. Now you can see application creates quick mask, apply it, but it completely doesn't match the scene. On the original image, the sun is coming from here. It's super strong. The image is really sharp. There are heavy contrasty shadows. Where on the new sky, obviously different direction of the light, different strength of the light, different hues. So it completely doesn't match. So golden hour isn't the right choice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the daylight skies. And here, let's just select one, for example, right from the beginning or up here. And just like that, immediately it works. How about that? So the difference is huge. Let's try another sky. I think maybe something like this. Now, if you're not sure about the direction of the sky, if it's not really matching, you can try another sky or you can also flip it. Let's just try one more for this example right here. How about this? Mm, I'm not so sure. So let's go back to the first one. Once we have it selected, as I mentioned, we can go into the sky orientation, flip it around and see if that works a little better. And in fact, actually, I think it works quite well. So let's have a look at the before and after. And I think that the difference is huge. So one more time, you wanna choose a sky that match the time of the day with your original photo. Daylight with daylight sky, night capture with night sky, and so on. Moving to the second important part of the sky replacement, and that's the importance of matching the direction of the light. Now, many people imagine just matching the direction of the light in the sky where, for example, the shadows are falling here, so you're gonna place the source of light here. However, it can be much more complex, like in this example here. So we're looking at this sample file. This is a tower bridge in London with a beautiful view there. Now the sun was quite strong, so I actually hide it behind the tower bridge. And now I want to add a new sky here. Now to match that, we need to add a sky which will have some sun rays on it. So basically it will create a really nice effect here. So let's do that. We're going to jump into the sky selection. I'm going to go into the custom collection where I already have the sky that you can find in the sample files here. Once we select it, you know what to do. We're going to go into the sky orientation. 
First come first, let's adjust our horizon position. So what I usually like to do is to drag it up so I can see the line, and then we're gonna bring it down until I'm sure that it covers everything. Once I have the horizon set, then I can play around with the vertical position. So let's have a look at it. When you look at it, you can see the sun rays here. So that looks good. However, they are completely away from the actual source of light, the sun here. So what can we do? First, we can try to flip the sky and see if that works a little bit better. Now let's have a look at it. I think perhaps something like this. Yep, something like this looks good. So we're gonna flip it. Now, once we have it flipped, then again, we're gonna adjust the vertical position. And I think at the same time, the horizontal position as well. So we want to align the sun rays with the sun. So let's do that. Let's just shift it. Uh, keeping an eye on the sun, which is here, keeping an eye on the sun rays. So I think something like this, or maybe even a little bit further. That looks good. Do we need to bring it back up a little bit? Maybe. And you really need to play around with this to make sure that it works. I think this looks quite good, maybe a little bit higher and a little bit more towards the side. Now that looks quite good. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it's great. So just like that, we have flipped the sky. So to basically follow the direction of the light and also to follow the different colors in the original sky. And then on the top of it, we have matched the sun, which was on the original image with the sun rays on the new sky. So all of that done here in the sky orientation section, again, paying big attention to the direction of the light to make sure that the sky replacement looks as realistic as possible. Now talking about successful and professional sky replacement, one of the key ingredients many professional photographers use is big sky library. Now, if you're struggling with that, we have our ultimate sky bundle, which has been recently refurbished, available on our website with a special discount. In this incredible bundle, you will get over 338 professional skies organized in 10 beautiful collections. On top of it, these incredible skies are in super high definition with at least 9,500 pixels on a long side, and they can be used in any application, including Luminar, Luminar Neo, Luminar 4, Luminar AI, and so much more. Now the Ultimate Sky Bundle is now available with our special release offer and to get it, simply follow the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, you can head directly to our website, cleverphotographer.com. Moving to the third point and third tip on how to make your sky replacement as realistic as possible. This point is focusing on depth. Now I have to say, this is one of the most common mistakes I see in a sky replacement. So back to another sample file with a beautiful model standing in front of Eiffel Tower. Now the original image doesn't have much of a sky, it's missing a texture and it's not so great. So I already applied the sky replacement. Just like in the previous example, I have used the same sky and align it with the source of light, which is the sun setting right behind the Eiffel Tower. Now let's just switch off the before and after and let's study the image a little bit. Now looking at it, you can see that the model is full in focus. We have all the details here. Also on the actual path towards the Eiffel Tower and somewhere around here, we're starting to see the depth of field. We're starting to see how that part is softening, softening until the Eiffel Tower is still recognizable, but it's soft and just a little bit blurry. Now, when we look at the new sky, you can see that it looks great. However, it has uh, all the details. It's really defined. It has all the details, all the edges and the texture. And that doesn't make sense. That's not how it would be captured with the camera. So what we can do? Well, back to our Sky AI tool, then into the sky adjustments, where we have the possibility to defocus the sky. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna use the defocus slider. And don't worry, when you shift it up, it will look crazy and overboard, 
However, it takes a moment, the application will settle it down, and then you can really start to adjust it towards what you're looking for. At this point, it's really important to find a reference point. For us, it will be the Eiffel Tower. So we will keep an eye on the Eiffel Tower and play around with the defocus slider to really match it with the Eiffel Tower and with the rest of the image. Now looking at the result, I think somewhere between 10 and maybe 15 looks the best. Again, coming back to the image, I think that the 12 looks the best. Now let's remove it, let's bring it back. And again, look at the difference. So again, full focus on the model, then nice, slow depth of field there with that kind of soft main subject here and the defined sky. Now, when we add the 12, uh, it will match nicely together. And I think even though it's quite subtle difference, all of that put together will really make it look much more realistic. So one more time, before, and after, and obviously by adding the sky, the image has much more impact and become much more powerful. So the depth on the new sky and the original image and matching them between each other is another really important part of successful and beautiful sky replacement. Okay, so moving to the fourth point and fourth tip, for sky replacement, where here we're gonna be talking about matching the noise between the new sky and the original image. Yes, you heard me right, matching noise. Imagine, well, it is not very well known, but many professional photographers use sky replacement as a way of reducing noise in their sky. Just like in this example here, I was in Oxford here in England. This is actually a Radcliffe camera library. And when I was walking around, I had a camera with me, but I didn't have a tripod. So as you can imagine, I had to put my ISO really high, somewhere 20,000 plus. Well, that gives you lots of noise, first of all. And quite often, most noise is hiding in the sky. So when we zoom in a little bit, somewhere around here, and when I show you the before, maybe zoom out a little bit, when I show you the before, you will see how much noise is still in the sky even after the noise reduction. So I have applied a new sky, which is all looking good, but now it doesn't match together. We still have this noise and grain in the original photo and the new sky doesn't have a noise at all. So how do we match this? Well, for this, back to our sky AI tool, open the sky adjustment section and we already work with the focus slider and we're just gonna go one down into the grain. Now let's zoom in a little bit and with the grain, let's go ahead and add, well, let's say again, somewhere between 10 and 15. Looking at it, that looks quite good. That looks like it matches between each other. But one more important step is to actually zoom out and look at the overall photo. Now, looking at it now from here, actually the sky looks a little bit too grainy. So we need to bring it back up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna back it up to, let's say 10. And that actually looks much better. So two tips here. When you're adding a grain, first of all, make sure that you zoom in, double check the amount, and then zoom out and check it again. Second thing, when you're adding grain, look at the actual image when I increase the grain slider. First thing that happened is that you get a lot of grain for a split second. Let's have a look one more time. When I do that, lots of noise. Then when you let go, it will settle to its original value. So when we go to the original 10, again, to start with, it's a little bit strong and then we get a really nice result. So not only the depth of field, but also the grain is important part of matching a new sky with the original photo. And now the fifth point and fifth suggestion on sky replacement. What we're gonna be talking about is reflection. It's one more often forgotten point when it comes to sky replacement. Let's have a look at the before and after. Now, originally the sky wasn't very interesting. It's a lovely scene, lots of details and lots of clarity and drama in the middle, but the rest is really washed out. So we have added new dramatic sky, which looks great. However, there should be same drama or at least part of it in the water. 
but it isn't. So it's a giveaway on the Sky replacement. So what can you do? Well, here in the Sky AI tool, you can go into the reflection section and here use the reflection amount and simply bring it up. And as I do that, you can see that just like with magic, we're getting the reflection in the water. Now we can go really far to 100% and get a really nice reflection there, or you can bring it down depending on what you like. In the reflection section, you're also going to find the water blur option, which is really handy when there is a movement or texture in the water. Let's check it out. When we take it and increase it, it will basically blur and soften the reflection in the water. Now for this image, we don't need to use it, but I think it's important that you know that it's here. So this is the basic reflection that is done here in the Sky AI tool. However, sometimes it happens that the water is not as defined or it's a complex situation. And then you have to apply a little bit more advanced reflection workflow. And we actually have full tutorial on how to do that easily here in Luminar Neo. And I will place the link to this video in the top right corner of your screen now. So if you're struggling to add the reflection using the reflection tab here in the Sky AI tool, then I suggest you to watch this tutorial and follow the workflow there. And just like that, we have finished with today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any questions about today's topic or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, my name was Jacob Bors and I can't already wait to see you in our future videos.